Is there life anywhere out there? That's basically that one question that I've been trying to answer for, I guess, almost like 10 years now, ever since I started making these videos, and there's still no answer. But is there even life anywhere else except for planet Earth right here in a solar system? Now that's a question that we might be able to answer in the next couple of decades, mostly based on a lot of different missions that are going to different locations like Jupiter's moons and objects like Titan, but technically we can even start answering this question by looking at some of the historical evidence from right here on planet Earth. And specifically looking at some of the geological evidence on how life evolved on the planet and why complex life became so diverse so quick. And so today we're actually going to be tackling one of these periods that happened approximately 600 million years ago when life surprisingly suddenly became super diverse for reasons we still don't understand, but a recent study might potentially provide some clues. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss one of the least known events on the planet, the event known as the Avalon Explosion, that suddenly resulted in evolution of very complex life on the planet that existed for approximately 30 million years, just to then suddenly disappear. But in order to basically understand why this is important, we need to take a look at Earth as it was 600 million years ago. Because it was not like this at all. It was a lot more likely, a lot more similar to what you see right here. A kind of a slushy world, very likely covered in ice and a lot of slush, as demonstrated in this image by Dr. Hu Yu Song. This is actually from a study about this period from 2023. And so during this ice period, the only life we had was obviously in the oceans and was extremely likely somewhat simple. But then, for reasons we still don't understand, all of this ice suddenly melted and potentially resulted in a sudden and very dramatic change of all ocean life all at once. And this was the beginning of the so-called Ediacaran period, when the continents on the planet resembled something like this. This geological period lasted for about 96 million years and led to the now famous Cambrian period that's very well known in biological circles for what's known as Cambrian explosion. Not an actual explosion, this refers to the explosion of diversity of life. The event that led to a lot of unusual creatures, a lot of them shrimp-like, but with very unusual features such as five eyes that we don't actually see in a lot of animals today. Here you see the famous Opabinia, but the most famous animal of this time is the main predator Anomalocaris, basically the T-Rex of that era, the biggest shrimp in the ocean. And in a lot of evolutionary circles, and obviously a lot of biological circles, Cambrian explosion is one of the most important events that's actually been studied really, really well. But the thing is, up until relatively recently, not a lot of scientists knew that Cambrian explosion was technically the second such event. The event when life suddenly exploded in diversity, and a lot of different animals evolved a lot of different features, with all of them suddenly adding to huge amounts of diversity in animal life. And while well, approximately 33 million years before this, following the glaciation period, there was actually another less known event. The first event to form really complex life on Earth. And the event that we still actually know very little about. Mostly because there's just not a lot of fossils from this period, and because a lot of life that existed back then was a little bit too soft and thus difficult to preserve. Most of the animals during this time were soft-bodied organisms. And so around 2008, completely by accident, by using a lot of different evidence, even going back several decades to like 1946 or so, researchers proposed that there was actually another really important explosion event that they now dubbed Avalon Explosion. Named after Avalon Peninsula in Canada, where many of these samples were discovered, and this was only discovered completely by accident, based on some of the initial discoveries from Australia and from Europe. And prior to this, it was actually completely unbelievable because nobody thought complex life existed so early on. For example, this strange animal, the Insonia, was up to about 1.4 meters in length and existed approximately 567 million years ago. And though we're still not sure exactly what this animal was, it might have had some kind of a head and it might have had some kind of a butt. But most importantly, we know that it possessed cholesterol. And we've actually talked about this in one of the videos in the description. And so Dickinsonia was very likely one of the main members during this time. But quite a lot of other animals or similar unusual species existed during this time because, as the name implies, it was a sudden explosion of biodiversity. And though some of these animals are completely alien to us, 
some are not. For example, with this one, Kimberella was maybe some kind of a mollusk or possibly even an ancestor of modern slugs and even things like octopuses and squid. But based on what we see in the fossils, it does seem to be some kind of a mollusk, with the oceans potentially resembling something like this. And though a lot of these things look like plants, they're actually animals. Different sea sponges and different types of worms, or I guess worm-like creatures. Importantly though, all of these were multicellular organisms that suddenly replaced single cell life that was predominant during the glacial periods. And so quite a lot of complexity very likely started at this time. But the thing is, not a lot of these species survived. Even though it's things like jellyfish and mollusks potentially did, most of these other things did not. Here's actually one example of something that might have survived. This is a purple sea pen or a genus known as Virgularia. Something that might have started during this time as well. But the reason discovery of the Avalon explosion was so important is because it showed us that modern life was actually a result of several such events. Very explosive events representing sudden advances in multicellular organisms that became really successful for millions of years, but then disappeared for reasons unknown. And so intriguingly, a lot of these organisms only existed for about 40 million years, because following the Cambrian explosion, most of these were gone. And today it's not clear why, but some biologists believe that it's probably the result of competition, or maybe predation. Because after all, a lot of Cambrian explosion animals were very active hunters with exceptionally good sensory organisms. For example, multiple feelers and eyes. And so they might have just eaten everything else. But the thing is, even after the Cambrian explosion, not a lot of these animals survived either. For example, today it's believed that Anamovacaris went extinct and did not actually evolve into anything. Which presents the evolution of complex life in a somewhat different light. It might have been the result of many explosions and a lot of different competition from different types of species, but even today the exact reasons for the extinction or even for the beginning of these explosions is still not clear. Nevertheless, studying this is super important for astrobiology, mostly because back then Earth was very similar to objects that we see around us where we think life might exist. For example, Europa and even Titan, the objects covered with ice and the objects containing oceans underneath the ice. And for astrobiology, studying these events on Earth is super important. And if you want to find out more about Avalon Explosion and the history of the discovery, check out the video by PBS Eons that should be somewhere right there. But basically, just to summarize, this was essentially the evolution of very strange life that almost looked alien to us. With all of this happening extremely suddenly in a very small time frame, following some kind of a geological event on Earth. But what exactly was this event? Well, for many, many years, researchers believed that it might have been the result of oxygenation. Or basically, when all of this ice retreated and when the snowball Earth became regular Earth, a lot of different cyanobacteria could have started producing a lot of oxygen all at once, with oxygen then increasing the chances for life to evolve through various chemical processes. And so this unusual link between increase in oxygen and increase in diversification was essentially the main explanation. But one of the recent studies from 2023 kind of disagrees. You can find this in the description, but in a nutshell, by doing a mineral analysis of rocks from this period, the researchers established that the oxygen in the oceans was most likely actually low, possibly even five times lower than today. And so that oxygenation idea was maybe not the best explanation, at least according to this particular study. And though oxygen in the atmosphere might have been high, it was clearly not high in the water, where it basically mattered. Most of the life during this time was marine in nature. But a much better answer comes from this recent paper that as always you can find in the description that actually analyzed different minerals for different reasons. Here they focused on pyroxenites, and specifically what's known as the plagioclase crystals that were found in Brazil and were very likely formed 591 million years ago. And the thing about these crystals is that they actually contain tiny magnetic minerals which tend to change depending on the intensity of the Earth's magnetic field. And so when these crystals are formed, if the field is very strong, they're going to be a certain way. If it's not strong, it's going to be in a different way. Which basically allows us to study the magnetic field during various periods of Earth's geological history. Somewhat related to this, here's actually a really cool map by ESA showing us the distribution of magnetic field on planet Earth. 
And as you can see, it does differ just a little bit depending on where you go. But turns out that if you compare this to what was now discovered in these ancient crystals, the magnetic field on Earth today is approximately 30 times stronger. Or basically, approximately 590 million years ago, the magnetic field of the planet potentially almost disappeared. With the crystals suggesting that it might have disappeared for at least 26 million years. Which actually corresponds to that period of the Avalon explosion. And so strangely enough, during this period, Earth's magnetic field was actually at the weakest ever recorded. Which would naturally suggest dramatic changes to the atmosphere and a much higher influx of cosmic radiation. And though obviously this is more or less just guesswork, but we can maybe assume that because of the weakened magnetic field, something happened to the planet that suddenly encouraged a dramatic evolution of early life, resulting in that first explosion of diversity. The explosion that lasted for approximately 33 million years. At this point, we don't really know the exact details. All we know is that there is a direct correlation between a sudden dramatic jump in diversity of life and the formation of very complex life, with very complex bodies and defined body parts, this is actually the first time we see things like mouth and anus, and a much much weaker magnetic field that lasted for over 20 million years. So definitely a somewhat intriguing discovery, and something that I'm sure scientists will probably tackle once again, because this is super intriguing. Intriguing for both astrobiology and of course the history of complex life on planet Earth, but also for studies involving magnetosphere. Did the reduction of the magnetosphere result in a dramatic diversity of life? And if so, how? Now in this particular study, they do explain it through, once again, increasing oxygenation. But as I mentioned previously, one of the studies from last year kind of disproves this. So basically, currently, we don't know. Nevertheless, a super intriguing discovery and something we'll discuss in some of the future videos once we have more answers. Until then though, all we can tell for sure is, well... Life on Earth is definitely special, and it definitely evolved in a lot of different complex ways. But I guess more importantly, it also had so many chances to basically get nowhere. Yet somehow, for some reasons, we had these periods of biodiversity that lasted for millions of years, that basically pushed the envelope for the evolution of complex life, which eventually resulted in things like us. And so trying to connect the dots here and trying to figure out how all of this progressed is really what it's all about. But we'll talk more about this once there are more studies. Until then, thank you for watching, check out additional videos in the description to learn more, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.